Hello and welcome to Live Notes, an introduction to Imperial College's lunchtime recital series run by the Blythe Centre for Music and Visual Arts. My name is Alexander Suarez, a concert pianist, researcher and doctoral supervisor at Guildhall. And I'm delighted to introduce my own performances featuring works by Benjamin Britten, his Piano Variations from 1965, Ravel's Forlan from Le Tombeau de Couperin and Frank Bridges' Piano Sonata. And it is this final work that lies at the heart of the recital, Frank Bridges' monumental piano sonata, written as a reaction to the Great War of 1914 to 1918. Frank Bridge, the English composer, was perhaps the definition of a portfolio musician. He was a very fine string player, playing both violin and viola. As part of his own quartet, the English String Quartet, he played works by his great contemporaries, giving the UK premiere of Debussy's String Quartet, performing Ravel's Introduction and Allegro in front of the composer himself, and even playing piano quartets with none other than Foray at the keyboard. He was also a much respected and sought after conductor and teacher, and of course, a composer. And he gained much success in the early part of his career. He was a pacifist, and as such, the Great War marked a real turning point for him, both emotionally, but also compositionally. He looked to Europe to develop a radical new harmonic language that would express his thoughts and feelings. And it's perhaps because of this shift, along with his famed bluntness, which verged on being rude, as the reason why his works were so neglected for much of the 20th century after his death. And the piano sonata is the prime example of this, and to this day is still rarely performed. It was dedicated to one of his fallen colleagues, the composer Ernest Farrar, and took three years to complete from 1921 to 1924. It's set in a traditional three movement form and owes much to Berg, Scriabin and even the French composers Debussy and Ravel. The first movement begins with an extended introduction. First we hear tolling bells in the distance as a dark ominous theme rises in the bass. Then follows a tender falling theme from these two phrases, much of the motivic material of the whole sonata is developed. We hear in the first movement snatches of this tenderness, but ultimately it is darkness and volatility which wins. The sting is perhaps removed in the second movement, although anguish is never far from the surface. At the heart of this central movement is a beautiful rising melody. Initially, we hear it relatively simply with crystalline harmonies underneath, but at the climax, we hear a fully impassioned version. The third movement begins with a warlike march. We even hear distant shells rumbling in the distance. This gives way to an extended central section, which is rhapsodic and nostalgic, but ultimately the warlike march returns, and at the climax, music from the very introduction returns. There is a glorious coda where we have, in combination, tranquility and internal anguish. Preceding this, is a very different reaction to the Great War. Ravel's Forlain, which comes from his piano set, Le Tombeau de Couperin. 
This movement was inspired by a movement of Couperin's by the same name, Follin, from his Concert Royal, the Royal Concerts. We hear the influence of the Baroque master in both the modal harmonies, the form, and even the keyboard technique. But we have Ravel's own innovations with his crystalline harmonies, which even look forward to 12-tone techniques of the latter half of the 20th century. It really is the jewel at the centre of this work. To start the concert, we have a composition by one of Frank Bridges' pupils, Benjamin Britten. His piano variations of 1965, which are unfinished. We have six variations which have been reconstructed and completed by Colin Matthews, although it seems likely that as many as ten were intended by Britten. There's much interest in the way it's notated. It's marked like an improvisation at the beginning and written in free form with left hand and right hand at different times and different tempos left up to the performer. Britten was an extraordinarily fine pianist but wrote relatively little for the piano. Uh, it's one of the great curiosities of the 20th century. And I think with this work, we have a glimpse of a masterpiece that might have been. I very much hope you enjoy this recital and do stay tuned for future events by the Blythe Centre. Thank you very much.